Hey, my name is Chris. We have the 2022 Mach-E sitting back here. And there's a reason I'm standing in front of this car. You guys in towing and roadside, this car is killing you guys in the street. This is one of the easiest EV platforms to handle from a towing and roadside perspective. I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks for handling this vehicle, everything you need to know for towing and roadside. I'm gonna put this thing on a scale. We're gonna show you what it weighs. There's this giant misconception of how heavy these vehicles are. EVs are heavier than ICE vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles. I'm gonna show you the ticket. We're gonna put it on a scale, I'm gonna show you the ticket. From there, I'm gonna put this thing on my buddy's lift. I'm gonna show you everything underneath it. I'm gonna show you where to connect. I'm gonna show you where not to connect. I'm gonna show you everything to stay away from that will prevent you from succeeding in towing this vehicle. EVs sometimes require a 12 volt jump start. On the Mach-E, it's relatively easy, a little bit involved to get where you need to go, but it is relatively easy. So what we need to do is we need to start down here in the front bumper. What looks like a normal tow eyelet cover is not in this case. There is no tow eyelet provision back there in the bumper beam. What we have in here is we have remote jump leads. We have a positive, we have a negative. The reason why we have remote jump leads in the bumper of this vehicle, there are no mechanical handles on the doors of this vehicle. Everything on the outside of the door is electronic. The button to get in is electronic. There is no key cylinder in the door, so you can't even use a key in it. In these Ford fobs, you pull this out of the Mach-E and it's just a blank. There's nothing cut on it. You're not gonna get in that way. So what we're gonna do here, naturally positive on the red, negative on the black, use a jump box, use a donor vehicle, energize these leads. What's gonna happen is it's gonna give you enough power to then come over here and enter the door electronically. No physical door handle, no lock cylinder, simply a button. Press the button, the door opens. Come in here to the front trunk release, pull it twice, once for the main latch, once for the safety. Raise the cover. This panel and this panel need to come out. It's a little bit technical, but take your time. It comes out relatively easy. You want to start with this middle panel. You want to start on the passenger side up here and just go through here and start feeling for fasteners. And as you hit a fastener, simply pull up. And you're going to go through here and you're going to pop up every fastener. Start with this leg of this trim panel. Pull up. I'm just going through here feeling for fasteners. When I get to one, I'm giving it a pull. There's one right there, pull. There's one right there, pull. There's one right here. Pull gently, pull gently. On around to the front. There's one right there at the end. Come back down this side. Fastener. Fastener comes out really, really easy. Now in order to perform a 12 volt jump on this vehicle, Ford wants this platform jumped from an ICE vehicle, an internal combustion engine vehicle. They do not want this jumped off of another EV. That's their protocol. So you make your connection, come in here, pull your cover off your positive jump lug, and there is a given procedure on here. You wanna make your positive connection on the disabled Mach-E first. You make your positive connection on the donor vehicle second. Make your negative connection on the donor vehicle third, and then come back and make your, neg your negative connection on the disabled Mach-E right here at this ground lug. You will see the battery back here. Do not make any connections on the battery at all. Leave the two vehicles connected for three, four minutes. Go inside with the key fob present. Press the start stop button. The vehicle should initialize. Once it initializes, it will begin to harvest energy out of the high voltage battery through a series of inverters and converters and recover the 12 volt battery. From there, disconnect the two vehicles in the opposite order you connected it. So on the disconnection side, start with the negative on the Mach-E, go to the negative on the donor vehicle, the positive on the donor vehicle, and then come back to the positive on the Mach-E. That's how you disconnect it. But before we put all of this back in and drive down to that scale, I wanna show you one more thing. Every now and again, and it's not really common, but it does happen, you'll get a uh, charge cord hung in the charge port here. It just, it, it refuses to disengage. There is a mechanical release for the charge plug here. If you look back here in the fender, way back deep in there, there's a little cable you can get your finger on. But before you do that, this is your low voltage service disconnect. This needs to be disconnected before disengaging that charge cord. So this is really easy to do. Just take, you pull up on that red tab, press this. If you have a screwdriver, stick it through there. You'll see it's indicating off. From there, that's secured. You'll come back here, grab this cable with your finger and very, very gently pull it up. It doesn't require 
much distance. It's like maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Pull it up, it will disengage the charge cord and then pull the charge cord free of the car. So you climb back in the car, customer got back in the car and the vehicle is inoperable. I'm gonna show you why. On that cluster, there's a green ready light. If that green ready light's not on, chances are you forgot to close this circuit. All you need to do is pull your screwdriver out, your Allen key, whatever you had in this hole to hold the circuit open. Simply push it back down, re-engage a latch, ensure it's not gonna go anywhere, and you're good to go. When this circuit's open, the vehicle will not run. It takes down the entire 12 volt side, so gotta remember to do that. That is paramount importance. Like I said, the likelihood of it happening, it's not very often, but I have seen in the last couple weeks, a couple cars being towed, and somebody has had to actually dismantle the charging station and take the charge cord with the car and it was put in the deck and it wasn't a Mach-E, it was another manufacturer's vehicle, but it does happen. And on most of these platforms, there is a release. On the Mach-E, we have one. So you never have to dismantle a charging station and take the cord with you. Once you have the vehicle operational again, all you need to do is reinstall your panels. Simply start with this panel here, work your way up. Every time you reach a fastener, just give it a press, put the, the middle panel back in across the towel area and you're good to go. Before you have any preconceived notions of what a Mach-E might weigh, an electric vehicle might weigh, we're gonna compare it to this F-150. So we have a 3.5 turbo, big fuel tank F-150. The fuel tank all, is all the way full. I just filled it up about five minutes ago and I got about 300 pounds of junk in the bed, just towing gear. What we have here is we have a base model Mach-E, two wheel drive, small battery pack. So we're gonna take both of them over and we're gonna compare them on the scale and see what we have. So the results are in and I'm going to admit, I am actually surprised here because every one of these electric vehicles I put on scales usually comes out about 10 to 15% higher than what the manufacturer states. Mach-E actually came in right where it was supposed to. Mach-E runs around 4,400 to about 5,000, you know, 4,950, 4,960 pounds in what Ford states it weighs. This Mach-E, again, two wheel drive, small battery pack, base model, came in at 4,300 pounds. You can see we're a couple hundred pounds rear weight biased. The F-150 with a full tank of fuel, 5780. F-150s, that, that trim level, four wheel drive, they usually come in around 5,100 pounds. So what do all these numbers mean? When you're handling the Mach-E and you're towing it, you're putting on a rollback. If you're handling a large battery, all wheel drive, which is likely gonna be the bulk of them. When you look at a vehicle this small, I want you to remember that it weighs almost what that one does back there. So make sure you have enough truck. Make sure you have enough rear axle. Know what your truck can take, because when we're working with these smaller trucks, you're right on the borderline. If we're coming in around 5,000 and you've got some other gear in this, and this car's weighing 5,000, you're right at the borderline of what these smaller trucks can take on that rear axle. So keep that in mind when you're transporting the Mach-E. Despite the fact this one came in at 4,300, the all-wheel drives are heavier. So there are three different ways you can get the Mach-E in neutral to load it to a carrier. But before you do that, make all your connections so you don't have a roll away once you have the vehicle in neutral. So the first way is the most involved way. Come in here with a key fob present, hit the start stop button, come up here to the Mach-E icon, press that, go to settings, go down here to vehicle, scroll all the way to the bottom, Right here, you have neutral tow. Press and hold to initialize. Press there. States it's initializing. Telling you to put the vehicle neutral. Push your foot on the brake. Put the vehicle neutral. Press L. And you're gonna see up here in the display, emergency tow engaged. Turn ignition off for towing. From here, all you have to do, get out of the vehicle, winch it on. It will stay in this mode for 30 minutes. It will revert itself back into park. So the other two methods that are more direct, once again with the key fob present, come in here, press your foot on the brake, hit the start stop button. You're gonna see a green ready light. As long as you have this green ready light, this shifter will be unlocked with your foot on the brake. So just select neutral, again press L, and we're 30 minute neutral mode enabled. Third method. You come in here and you hit the start stop button and if for some reason you do not get a green ready light down here in the display, 
there is a workaround on this on this platform. Take and push your foot, one foot all the way down on the brake, one foot all the way down on the gas, and it will unlock the shifter. You can then shift it to neutral. Once again, press L. 30 minute neutral mode's enabled. Goes without saying that you wanna make all the connections to this platform before you go and you put it in neutral. Make the connections underneath where we showed you with the mini J's, draw on your line tension, make sure you have control of the vehicle so when you put it in neutral, the vehicle does not roll away. You never wanna have a roll away event, you always wanna be in control of the vehicle. So make sure you make all of your connections to the platform before you get it in neutral. So we finally have a lift. We're gonna get up under this thing. And I'm gonna show you where to connect and I'm gonna show you where not to connect. There are some cavities in this vehicle that are by no means intended for connection points. This is actually a front load only vehicle for a carrier. There's only connection points in the front. I'm gonna show you where those are. If you have to take it by the rear end, you're gonna to have to have a wrecker and dollies, relocate it. It's gonna go a distance, put it on a carrier and take it. We'll talk about dollies later on because there's some things I wanna address there. So. Let's take a walk under this and become familiar with it. So all the way up here in front, we have two connection points. Right here and right here. And you'll see I have something hanging here. This is a magnet, okay? This is a steel connection point. These round holes, mini J's go in there, load the vehicle. What I'm seeing, I've seen some photos of some of these vehicles that are damaged. The strike strips and the frame rails in this platform, they're aluminum. I'm gonna show you with the magnet. Magnet will not stick to them. You can put your finger in them and they feel like they're adequate, like, like these connection points are up here and they are by no means intended for connecting or retention. If you try to draw this vehicle down in the winch, you are going to tear the frame rails out on this vehicle. I've seen pictures of it. I know it's being done. I wanna make everyone aware of it so you can avoid a very, very costly claim on this platform. So let's walk back here. Same magnet. This is called a strike rail. This is the frame rail. Okay, they're aluminum. That, that magnet's not gonna stick to them. So this strike rail is intended to protect the battery pack. Okay, it's really easy to come in here and drop a mini J in any one of these holes. I've seen this one and this one torn out on the front end. In the frame rail, I have seen this hole right here torn out all the way back here. I know it's easy to look at this vehicle and be like, it's a Mustang. They have connection points in the torque boxes where they've always been. This is not a Mustang like you're thinking. This is a brand new platform. It has nothing in common with the old Mustang platforms. The torque boxes you're accustomed to going into on Mustangs, they do not exist by any means in this platform. For you guys using carriers and you wanna load it from the rear, we have diffusers on, these, on this rear suspension here. There's nowhere to go in here with a J-hook and connect and not damage these diffusers. If you go in here and you connect, you're gonna tear this diffuser off. It's gonna become very evident what happened here. So honestly, if you come across one of these vehicles that is nosed in and you have to get it to the dealership, my advice, come out with a wrecker and dollies, relocate it, turn it around, and then take it up on the carrier frontwards. That's the only recommendation here. I'm working with Ford on some sort of connection point in the rear end. Until I have something from them, there is no connection point back here. If they report back to me, hey, we validated some other connection point back here, believe you me, I'm gonna get my hands on another Mach-E and I'm going to tell you about it without fail. You'll, you'll hear it from me first because I'll be out here screaming it from the rooftops because it would be nice to have a rear connection point. Something I want to address to you repo agents. I know this happens because I ripped cars for 20 years. I, I know how repo agents handle cars. Sometimes you gotta get away fast. With these all wheel drive platforms, your parking brake is back here. What's unique to Ford is, Ford has a park pole in the motor and they have an electronic parking brake. They have two means to keep the vehicle stationary when it's parked. Most EVs park is, is nothing more than an application of the parking brake and the vehicle sits still, okay? If you come into this vehicle, pick up from the back end and you drive away and you have that if it rolls it toes mentality, I'm telling you right now, you're buying this car. You're gonna have a thermal event in the motor, you might catch the car on fire. Words to live by on any EV. Treat every EV like they're all wheel drive. I don't care if you know it's not all wheel drive, treat them all like they're all wheel drive. 
treat them with the same caution because if you're hauling this, even if you're trying to get away and go around the corner, these motors are not intended to rotate with the vehicle turned off at anything more than a slow walking pace. So if you were to push the car out of a parking spot and then load the vehicle up to a carrier, that's fine. If you hook it from the back end with a wrecker and you take off down the street, you are going to damage the motor. You will have some thermal event in that front motor. Going back to dollies, for guys that are gonna haul these on dollies, if you have to back into one of these, my advice is back into it, drop it, turn around on it, and put your dolly back here on the axle that has a brake because even though that front axle has a motor on it, it will rotate, there is no brake on it. And for you guys that like to run deep in the dollies and I don't need straps, if you have a set of dollies come apart and this car walks out of it and it goes from zero to 30, 40, 50 miles an hour like that, I can assure you, you are not gonna be able to stop fast enough before you damage that front motor. One more word of caution to you repo men. I see it all the time in the groups. These guys get really slick and they come into these, into these cars and they forklift them and they pick the whole car up or they do an inverted. We're gonna walk under this car again and I want you to pay attention to where the battery starts and it stops. So we're in the back end of the car right now. So the battery starts here, goes all the way to here. So for you guys that are doing inverteds, and you're coming in and inside of the axle or your forklift in the vehicle, if you penetrate this battery, you risk a fire. And it's a fire you don't want because it's gonna be something like you're gonna see on the 4th of July. You do not want to damage the battery. If you simply damage the battery, it's gonna be a replacement and they're not, they are by no means inexpensive. If you go into the battery and create a thermal event in the battery, it will likely result in a fire. So I know your repo guys are under the gun, sometimes literally approach this platform with caution, approach all EVs with caution. You have to get your dolly game on point. Like I said, I used to repo cars. I was about 40 pounds heavier than I am now. I was like 275, 280. I humped 570 all steel dollies off the back of wreckers all the time. And I got proficient at it. I could throw them down fast. Most of you guys are in better shape than I was. There's no reason you guys can't throw dollies. I've seen a lot of you guys are big guys. Get proficient in throwing down dollies. You should not be handling any EVs without dollies. I understand you guys are running auto load wreckers. I get it. That's the only way I do it. But treat every EV like it is an all wheel drive platform and you're going to be safe. So we have a complete understanding of what the underside of this vehicle looks like. When it comes to retaining these these platforms on a rollback, on a carrier, it's eight point only. We're not running this vehicle down in the winch. I, I know that a lot of guys have to be broken of this habit. You cannot run this platform down in a winch. You should not be running any EV platform down in a winch. It's eight point only. This may come as a surprise. I sat through a training event a couple months ago and there was a guy in there from, we're not even gonna say where he's from. He was from a rural area had never seen an eight point kit. Didn't even know what one was. They showed him how to use it. He liked it. More guys need to embrace the eight point kit. As we move into more and more EVs, it's the only retention method. It's the only one that makes sense. And for you guys that are still choking wheels, you're taking the, the strap, the lasso strap and going through the wheel and choking it down. I get it. We used to do it like that seven, eight years ago. We're on to the eight point now. This is a finished wheel. I can guarantee you that strap will chafe this wheel. I don't even want to try to speculate with you know, what a wheel or a set of wheels costs on this vehicle, much less to refinish them. So if you're currently choking them, no big deal. Just graduate to the eight point like everyone else is, and you're gonna be totally fine. So that wraps up our deep dive on the Mach-E. All of this is very elementary. This vehicle, as I said from the outset, this is an extremely easy platform to handle. You just need to know where not to go, where to go on connection points, getting the vehicle neutral. It's all real, real simple stuff. Like I said in the beginning, this is the first vehicle I'm shooting on this. If there's any vehicle platforms that are giving you guys trouble, giving your company trouble, your team of drivers trouble, drop a comment, like, subscribe, and I'd appreciate if you referred me to other folks in the towing space.